today we're taking a look at the mighty hanover again this is one of the more interesting super ships to me of course interested in brawling battleships this is the ultimate german brawler and it does do a lot much better than the german line for example the guns are going to actually overmatch 32 millimeters which is really really nice as well as having pretty good turret angles that's one of the main struggles of the german battleships i find this ship is going to be running a bit of a different build this time i've kind of decided that i play too aggressive a lot of the time i get baited into trying to get use and value out of the secondaries too often so notice the secondary range it's not really all that impressive but i still do have manual secondaries that's really the only secondary upgrade i have the thought process being that the secondaries are going to do the most damage within eight or nine kilometers that's really kind of their effective range and if we push them out to 11 or 12 and a half kilometers they're going to be missing most of the time anyway so i'm not really gaining a lot of value there whereas if i'm taking tanky skills or concealment anything like that accuracy on the main guns that's just really going to help my damage output way more often and a push that is going to work with 11 kilometer secondaries it's probably also going to work with 9.2 kilometer secondaries. I just have more tanky or abilities to play at longer ranges. And I think that is going to be how I'm playing a lot of these secondary battleships going forward. It's pretty new. I played this game yesterday, so it's really uh, not something I've had the opportunity to try on any other of my secondary battleships. But even things like Ohio, I'm probably going to try messing around. If you guys have been around the channel long enough, you know that... Secondary battleships really are the main source of commander resets for me. And here we go again, <laughs> another round. <laughs> uh, but it really does help to have a battleship that can function at least at the mid to longer range, especially in these super ship games. This time we do get fortunate enough to not have to deal with a carrier or subs. And there is a cyclone coming in. So that is certainly gonna help us perform pretty well here. But there are opportunities and games where you just can't push in. You aren't going to get value out of those secondaries anyway. And you want a ship that's going to do that more often, is the idea, right? We want those broadside cruisers to take a little bit more damage. And Hanover, while not the most accurate or reliable, it can do some pretty good work these days, honestly. And I'm pretty excited to try out this build on uh, a few different ships, honestly. I apologize for the uh, cat commander. There's a few people who really love the Hanover that make me play it a lot on live streams. And they just insist on making me run the cat commander. So I might have to veto that in the future if I'm gonna be making more videos, but uh, for, some, for whatever reason, I just really, really enjoy that cat commander. <laughs> Uh, I'm lying. I'm joking. I'm being sarcastic here. They actually hate it, but because they make me play the Hanover so often, I decide to torture them with the Cat Commander. But if I'm making videos, I do apologize to you on YouTube specifically. Notice we do miss out on the Nevsky broadside, so not the most consistent thing in the world, but the idea is that we're not overcommitting into people trying to get value out of our secondaries, and then we have to hit a shot. To live. That's kind of the thing I want to avoid. That's really what I find myself dying to a lot, and it makes me very frustrated when I'm playing my battleships. If I decide to make a play, push in very aggressively, and that aggressive push relies on me dev striking someone at eight kilometers, let's say, um, and then I don't, that is pretty frustrating. So if I'm not playing that aggressive or Maybe with less secondary range, I'm not thinking constantly about how to get the secondaries firing or letting it happen naturally. I think I'm going to play a lot better. This game is certainly a great example of that. Our team is melting a little bit in this one, certainly. I've played pretty passive to start with, but considering there's a Shimakaze around, I don't think you can quite blame me for that. Um, as we move into this Cyclone approaching, this is where the fun with Hanover is really going to kick off. Again, broadside Yushikov probably should be taking citadels there. Um, I would love to have a battleship that could guarantee me some damage there. Unfortunately, uh, Hanover is not that at the moment. So our Republic is probably going to take a little bit of extra damage here. And at least we have our front guns for one more salvo even into him. I guess, fine. He does die at least, so <laughs> there's that. 
But now we definitely need to worry about this cyclone. I'm skipping ahead a little bit because that initial phase of cyclones is pretty boring most of the time since people are so far away that we need real time to get within eight kilometers of each other on both views. So we finally find the Seattle and we're left in a, what, 3v5. That is doable with a Hanover with this much HP, but the enemy team has a lot of really strong ships as well. They have a Vincent coming in right now. And the key here is going to be citadeling the Vincent. We do need to get a citadel at least on this guy, even at these ranges. Um, it's very difficult. Vincent, I think, should really have the raised citadel, like the tier 9 and tier 8 before it. I don't understand why they just shrunk it and put it way underwater, so it's very, very difficult to hit. It makes it really, really impossible to kill <laughs> in close range situations like this. Um, but we'll try again. We do have to avoid those torps, so we pop our hydro. And those 30k torps are pretty terrifying. Again, not quite enough to kill there, but at least we do get some decent damage. Certainly hoping uh, for citadels more often than that, though. So now with the Schroeder appearing on our right side, I am a little bit worried about torps from him. And for those of you that know about the Schroeder, you should know that that ship actually doesn't have torps. In the heat of the moment in this game, I just assumed tier 9 battlecruiser torpedoes. Um, so I'm very happy here in the moment uh, that the Vincent died in the path of these imaginary torpedoes that I'm thinking I need to dodge. Um, feeling very fortunate about that, but honestly, there's really not much to worry about there. Uh, it would have been a really, really happy accident there as a nice play is we, if we were dodging torpedoes there. But unfortunately, um, I do make some misplays here looking back on things now that I know that I could have been a little bit more angled in a few ways. I was shooting for the cheek on the Schroeder there with some turtle back and all that stuff. We're kind of looking for that front angled part of the Citadel. I'll give you a better example on the Borgone in a little bit here, but uh, against a broadside like that, full pens, but unfortunately we don't end up getting any Citadels. At this point, I probably should be turning in to try and angle into this Borgone, but I have been showing a turn in here anyway, and in the back of my head, I'm still thinking about those imaginary Schroeder Torps. Uh, so there you can see some of the value in learning the game and understanding exactly what ammo types and armaments every ship has. Uh, and even I make some pretty big mistakes there. So there you go. We aim for that kind of cheek corner of the turtleback and we are able to punch through into a citadel on the Borgone. That's kind of the idea when you see turtleback ships and they're angling to you. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough to take them out. And we end with 300,000 damage. And a ton of secondary hits as well. So not quite the uh, finishing brawl that I would have hoped for to get a win, but I had a lot of fun playing this brawl. And hey, I learned something. I really do need to remember which ships have uh, corpse and which don't. And considering our build, 248 secondary hits for 30k is pretty solid, honestly. So what is this build that we're running? Well, the equipment side of things really hasn't changed too much. We're very much focused on main guns here. We're even taking a propulsion mod like I talk about uh, all the time when it comes to battleships. I want to take two out of the three uh, fire prevention skills, upgrades, and flags. So we have this option here for damage control system mod two. We have this flag here. And on the commander, we have the upgrade here. The idea here being that I'm a little bit harder to hit with that uh, speed upgrade. Acceleration is very handy for when you're moving around islands or you're kited away, trying to accelerate away from torpedoes. It's very useful to dodge incoming salvos even. So taking base, basics of survivability here helps us against fires and against incoming fire. So instead of long range secondaries, that's kind of the idea here. I'm still taking manual uh, aiming on the secondary since it is probably the single best upgrade to secondaries you can take and over. You get 9.2 kilometers base, and that is good enough, I guess. Not necessarily base, I should say the aiming system on the upgrade does give you a little bit, but that's good enough, I think. With the gimmick here, or the combat instructions, you can extend that for a short time, but I like this build for me personally, just because of that, uh, I'm less baited into thinking I should push, I think is the idea. If someone is at 12 kilometers and I have 11 kilometer secondaries, I want to move up just a little bit just so I can get my secondaries on target. And I often find myself doing that even when I shouldn't. So this build 
is going to help me stay alive a little bit longer. And that is very good because the longer you are alive, the more you can impact the battle. So that's the build that I'm running here. Again, aiming systems doesn't always help, but uh, it gets you a few more accurate salvos, I think. And this is what I'm going to be trying on a few other battleships as well, trying mid-tiers as well. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure if it's going to work everywhere, or maybe I just got really lucky with Matchmaker giving us no CV and no sub, and a Cyclone that made this build look excellent. So that very well could be the case. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and have a great rest of your day.